Hello everybody, another guide here and this time I want to make a guide about Meligos Warlock and now with the new new set of the League of Explorers I figured out that I wanted to try Meligos Warlock again. Uh, I played the deck a bit before and the general strategy that you have with the Meligos Warlock is that you um, try to get a good Emperor off and really combo your deck down with the Meligos together with like Soul Fires or Dark Bombs. Um, the thing why this deck was a lot of uh, a lot of times weak, and that is a bit the general problem sometimes with Meligos. It is really hard to put off the wall combo. You need the Meligo you need the Emperor first, and you need the discount from the Emperor on the right cards. So what we actually did, and what people tried recently, is trying to make a more consistent uh, Warlock Meligos lock. That doesn't only uh, consist out of Meligos or that has other win conditions too. Or that can cycle easier. Of course the Wallach has the best hero power to cycle. The hero power where you can just draw for 2 mana card is probably the best hero power in the game. And why is Meligos Warlock uh, pretty good actually now? Because I played it on the ladder I and, and I went to a pretty decent rank with a pretty nice win rate uh, with this deck. And why is Meligos Warlock better now? Uh, the one thing is, you have some uh, good early game cards that can really help you uh, trying to survive these early turns or not get overrushed. And some of these cards are Zombie Chow, but also the new card, the Dark Peddler, really helps you to, to get out of the early game. Uh, you have some good removal with the calls, you have some um, um, decent uh, AoE removal with the Hellfire. But another really uh, good thing is uh, the Dragons now. Where the Meligos Warlock wasn't really able to play any of Dragons uh, before uh, the new set. Now it is actually possible since the Twilight Guardian is also here. And together with the Twilight Guardian, the Twilight Drake and the Ezra Drake, you have like enough also to play the Blackwing Corruptor. And Blackwing Corruptor is of, of course a really good card from himself if you can pull it off. Uh, one of the biggest thing is where the Meligos Warlock struggles is dealing with big minions and that is why a lot of people actually like to play double BGH and I am a big fan of this. Also together with the Abusive Surgeant you sometimes can buff a 5 uh, attack creature and you just kill it off with the BGH. And another card that is really good in this deck or sometimes is really good is Brand Bronzebeard. Uh, you can use it in a lot of different ways. You can use it with the Abusive to uh, buff for 4. You can use it with the Urban Ring to heal 6. You can use it at turn 8 to heal 16 back. You just go back to almost full life. You can use it with the Twilight Drake and Twilight Guardian. And that are some also some really good combos where you can just get your Drake on the double health. If it is in 4-7, it meanwhile is in 4-30 now. And together with the Twilight Guardian or the Blackwing Corruptor where you deal 6 damage. The Ezra Drake where you draw 2 cards. The benefit that you can get from the, bron the Bronze Spirit is really good in this deck. And of course it doesn't always happen and sometimes it's just a 3 mana card. But even if you play it as a 3 mana card, it has decent stats. So the benefit that you get from the Bronze Spirit is for sure worth to play it in this deck in my opinion. And I just explained you a bit about the general strategy of Melgos. So let's get, let's get some gameplay in. Uh, I played it already a bit on stream and on ladder. You see, I have a pretty decent rank now. Um, played it a lot. Played this deck also a lot for uh, in rank cut. And yeah, there are like five or six k, six or seven k legend players now. And yeah, Malika's Warlock is just doing really well. It is not an easy deck. It's really difficult um, because so matchups you don't have much win condition left. But I'm really in love with this uh, Malika's Warlock version. For Doomhammer. And okay, we play against shaman. It's really hard to say what shamans are nowadays. Uh, most of the shamans run on, but this is a, like a really good early hand. Like the thing we are missing is the one drop, but with the peddler we all we make sure that we have a good two drop and a good three drop. So I'm thinking if I even want to mulligan something away, I think this is one of the best hands I can have uh, without having. The zombie child, but I think I take this hand. I think I'm happy with it. I have a turn 2 dark peddler. If I need to remove, I have the option to remove. Then I do the turn 3 peddler with something I get out of the, the with something I get out of it. So yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with this deck. Mm, I think we can play that here actually. I think just curving out is really important against Shaman. This just destroys all his totems that he's gonna make. Uh, or like an and one or a two drop just is so good against shaman in general. 
uh, because they have to fight against it and they can do that with their totems they have to either play their minion that has better stats or they play uh, they have to use a removal spell Okay, well, Haunted Creeper is a really good answer, so yeah, that uh, sucks a bit, but it's fine. I'm pretty sure we... And this is the good thing about Peddler, like, as a 3 mana card, you have the options, and there is almost always a good option. It just makes sure you only have to play one card, and you get two cards that are good in the early game, and that is why I'm in love with the Peddler. I think Zombie Chow is too good to pass up. We are the more control deck, so... He will make that trade. So there is our third zombie chow guys in the deck. Okay, it doesn't have another two drop. That's pretty good for us. Okay, picking up a guardian. Well, there is nothing to dark bomb. So we can just see if we can get something out of this peddler again. Another zombie chow. Do we take that? Zombie Joe is so good. We can go for Void Walker, but I think the stats are just too good from the Zombie Joe. Kinda wanna play around the Lightning Storm now. Uh, what is the best way? This is actually the best way to play around Lightning Storm. With the Chow on the board, we are not in a rush. I mean, he's not gonna use. Yeah, this is the best way to play around Lightning Storm. Even it kills everything. In the other way, it's a 50 50 that it kills everything. And then he is left with two 1-1s. One if it doesn't work, then he still trades the 1-1 one one in. So yeah, pretty good early start here for us. Used already the coin. If he's gonna use spells like Rock Bider, like, see the value that the Peddler had, guys. It uh, takes a spell out of the hand from the Shaman by just the one drop that you get. And of course, we had double Zombie Chow, but it happens really rarely. But yeah, you see, it works out pretty well. Okay, drawing the Azurdrick is really good here because it makes the Twilight Guardian and 3-6. And as you see, this deck already curves out really well. And that is what I always missed in the old Malaga Swalog where the win condition was sometimes pretty low um, when you didn't get the Malagos. Now that the problem is almost fixed. Oh. Almost. Almost, bro. Yeah, I think we just play Drake here. Fine. Okay, there is the Meligos. And Meligos, in so many ships, you can really play him around turn 9, 10, and you use him together with one spell. But uh, Shaman has good answers. They have the Hex. Like, against Druid, you can do that. In the Mirror, you can do that. But against Shaman, maybe I will drop it. It really depends how the game goes. Okay, getting the Earthshock there. Used... Crackle together with Urshok for one Guardian. I mean, the value that we get out of our cards is really big now. You can see it in the hand size. Like, we are fine on board. Oh, wow. Drawing it here. I don't even know. I don't even think I use it now. Just double Summit Chow looks pretty good. The only good thing is he has no way of dealing with it, right? Yeah, that's true. He cannot fire Elemental. So we just play it on curve. If he hexes it, this is a matchup where we don't need an insane emperor. We can win this by uh, value wise. It's just so hard. Like, he needs to have an answer. It's so expensive for him to use his hex here off curve. Like, what is he gonna do now? Make a totem or play in 3 drop? Yeah, see? All the tempo is just still here in our favor. Used already one earth shock. I think I can just overwhelm the board here, right? Uh, because we have Chows, the attacks in the face make almost zero sense. I feel uh, that I'm so good on board. Let's let's see let's see if he has a lightning storm. I'm I don't see the reason to play a second Chow. Wow, he has some pretty good answers actually, guys. Actually, his answers are pretty good. Mm, so we have the Blackwing Corruptor. And the good thing about Melagos is that it, of course, is also in Dragon. So it's also in Dragon that you can keep all the time in the hand to get so to get the buffs on your Twilight Guardians and Blackwing Corruptors. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can just trade this Chow in. I really like the value of the Dark Room that we have here. So yeah, pretty nice. Um, yeah, let's just play the Chow. I was a bit passive with playing my Chow. I called it played it last turn. I don't think it called hurt me a lot, but I didn't really saw the reason to overextend. It both clear is 0 2 totem, but yeah. It felt a bit safer into a lightning storm. That was kinda good there on that part. And you see, there's one card that called really reckless, and that is Dr. Boom. And that is why I like to play double B BGH in this deck. Okay, yeah, I think we wanna drop Boom here, right? Don't see the reason to play this Chow. Tapping is so uh, valuable. Like, this deck really wants to cycle a lot, so I always try to tap a lot too. Uh, we can, yeah, this 5 in the face, we're not gonna miss that. Might already pressure almost lethal. With the melee goes together with the Dark Bomb, we have an 8 mana Dark Bomb. We have so much damage on board already. We'll see what's gonna happen here. So how much do we have? We have nine. Oh, he had the lightning storm actually, guys. He had it. Wow, that is an insanely terrible boom. <laughs> Holy shit. Haven't really saw inverse booms. We're not gonna hellfire. Death to the pretenders. So it restores four, so I attack for three actually. This attack this attack is worth three damage. Yeah, then we make this trade, right? Not gonna spend Dark Bomb here. Put two life. Just playing it for the value wise. I mean, when we pick up a Soul Fire here, with the Soul Fire we have 17 damage from hand all the time. So once we put him lower, then we have like a real. We are in a really good spot. Oh wait, I was right, this is 8 and this is 9, so 17, 20, 29, so we are actually 1 damage of lethal guys. Because of that I can consider actually playing Hellfire. Hmm. Because we have lethal then, but uh, I mean this trade is just good enough. Lucky Corp is a blue draw, of course. I wield the power of Black. Yeah, that's good as well. And we just stay how it is here. Just waiting, guys. We know that we have the combo. If he, if he doesn't kill um, two minions here or doesn't kill the boom, yeah, he, his boom surviving is already lethal, and yeah. But yeah, we see it with the Meligos that gives spell damage to all our cards, plus 5 spell damage to all our cards. We are getting an insane combo in. So now we really saw like the power of the deck where you get so much value of your uh, cards in general. Uh, you have really well trading cards, cards that are really, yeah, just valuable. You play 2 mana cards that some people, are, some decks already spent 2 cards on. Your AoE is good, your uh, single removal is good. And yeah, like he thinks he is safe guys at 18 or at uh, at 23 lives, but I don't think so. Oh, worm one. This really, this game was showed really the power of the Meligos Warlock where you trade well, even without Meligos guys, we will probably win it, but 
Uh, that is against Shaman. Against other decks, uh, you probably need the win condition from Maligas too. Uh, yeah, against Shaman, it's uh, you can curve out, or your curve can be enough, but especially the really close matchups against uh, where you really have to uh, where outvaluing your opponent doesn't work all the time. Against Warrior, against Handlock, against Paladin, also sometimes it depends a bit, but. Okay, I don't think Dark Bump is really a keep. I don't mind keeping all sometimes, but... Really hard to say if I want to keep all. I don't think so. I really want to draw a Chow Aura and Dark Petley here. Okay, this is a pretty bad hand. Soulfire BGH, of course. Like, BGH is okay to draw, but Soulfire really bad in the start. Really want a minion here. Okay, we at least pick up the Wonder of the Zombie Chow helped so much here. So good. Uh, trades into all, all his drops. Of course he has the secret up and we don't know what it is, but... Yeah, the all will be good here. Uh, I don't know if he should have kept it. We can attack here. And Mortal Call. But... It only helps with this redemption. We just tap here, I guess. It's fine. Got some time. Uh, we don't have the dragon yet for the corruptor, so that's something we have to keep in mind. So we know it's not a competitive spirit. We know it's not uh, noble. It's either redemption. It's either redemption or revenge. Yeah. yeah, I think we can get away by just playing our own minion here. And people are always so scared when you drop the bronze spray. They always want to kill it immediately. Like it's good enough here as a drop. If he trades everything in, um, then I'm pretty happy. Only thing that's super scary is if he goes with blessing or kings. Blessing of kings will be pretty good for him. Put this apple on your head. I don't think I really mind this. I mean, he's still gonna make at least a lot of attacks in the bronze spirit. So trades a lot of his own stuff in here. Pretty fine for me. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty likely event, right? I think I shot more to call here. And then the event is gonna hit. If the Avenge hits here, we probably need to uh, soul fire, right? Let's see where the Avenge hits. Okay, pretty nice. We'll have uh, Dark Bomb this also. Because the 3 damage doesn't... It depends. If he plays 1 minion, it's even. If he plays 2 minions, it might have been better to do the other one, yeah. Drake Coin Dark Bomb is pretty okay here, right? I can Corrupt her, but the Corruptor is so bad into the Shredder. Yeah, I think I... Go up, gonna play a bit out of curve here. Of course, I really want to remove this, but I uh, don't want to play too much off curve. Also, I have to prepare a bit for challenger. Um, now I have a 50 50 if he has challenger here that I that the challenger gets the second advantage and that I can BGH it. Will be really painful here. He had a pretty rough early curve for me, so um, yeah, we are having a hard game here. The early curve was pretty painful. Okay, yeah, our life toll is also a bit. Hmm. Gotta see where the how this is gonna go. Need to know where the uh, if he has a bench here, which secret is missing, if the things go off. Okay, so nice. So it's 
One secret is missing. We can tap here first. If we still want to tap. Let's see what the secret is first. I've got the beast in my side. Okay, so it's no uh, competitive spirit. So if he still plays in secret out of these three cards, I really expect a competitive spirit. So yeah, we tap here, see if God we draw. Heal bot. I think our hand is good enough, right? That we can use soul fire here, even if we discard something. Double dragon in hand. Emperor, yeah, I think it's pretty fine. Emperor is... Oh man, that's a pretty aggressive one. I think it's fine. It's it's questionable for sure to do this uh, soul fire, but it's such a value game that we have to play. Or like we have to play the board game. I mean, otherwise he had like already eight on board. I don't really want to play heal bot next turn because I still think I have to fight for board with the corruptor. Mm. If he follows this up with boom, it's gonna be super hard. I mean, the creeper juggler start with the, together with the avenge into shredder into challenger is just a lot for us to handle. Sucks. So yeah, we got a guardian here, right? We can tap first. Oh, yeah. 5-4 contested 3-5 really well. Yeah, we cannot play two minions. Put that is actually... Oh man, yeah, he has to I really need to pick up the all here. So yeah, we can only play one card. I'm pretty sure we shall just play the peddler here and see if we can pick something up that helps us. Soulfire. I mean, the other two are crap, so I'm still pretty sure we pick up Soulfire, but it doesn't really help us, right? Yeah, the other two are not good enough in my opinion. Death to the pretenders! So, nine mana next turn. I shall not play my guardian, that's for sure. If I play Healbot, he's gonna trade, trade maybe. My Healbot doesn't do much. So many. Possibilities. Guardian is super greedy. Or corruptor, I mean. Yeah, I have to heal body here. Cannot get away without heal body. Mm, yeah, we, we never have the time to play our own stuff, guys. It's uh, The curve is really hard that we are facing here. Reporting for duty. Yeah, we need all with removal or something. Really rough. Kind of risky for him to take still so much damage. But yeah, he knows we didn't play Emperor yet. So there's not much risk. Oh, makes trades. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I think you just smack the face here. Reporting for duty. Yeah, abusive Surgeon will also really help here because they will call, be called Abusive Surgeon plus Big Game Hunter. Um, we can Ezra Drake, I mean we trade, nah, but then we die. Nah, we don't die. Corruptor, we don't even corrupt or anything, so I think we just Ezra Drake and hope we draw something. Hellfire is. Not good enough now. Yeah, game gets super hard here. We just don't have the turn where we uh, where we can take over the board. The he just had to threat every time the turn before. That really sucks. And uh, of course the the Shredder Challenger Tyrion, it, the Belcher. There are some really valuable minions that we're facing here. Well played. None may steal our souls. 
And 8 damage that he has now, so 1 off. But might have two silver. And there's the true silver, yeah. Really well played by him. Um, Paladin is one of the hardest matchups, I don't know. I always struggle with Paladin. I think... Uh, like, Priest Warrior, they are really good because you... Uh, Handlock is a really good one. Handlock is probably the best one. Aggro decks are really good because you have so much anti-aggro cards. You have so much... Uh, you have the AoE, you have the Taunts, you have the Dragons. Uh, but Paladin is still... Sometimes they just uh, seem to curve out really well. And you're just behind and you cannot do much more than playing one or two minions. But I hope you like the deck. I would say if you like the deck, if you like Dragon decks, if you like combo decks, you should try it out once. It's a really cool deck to play and... Yes, thanks everybody for watching and see you next time.